and oh look at that the hangout on air is definitely live and I'm definitely sitting here with believe it or not Bruce Hammond hello Bruce hello and I'm also here with the uh, the Paramotic crew of course it's um, Nakata Jade and Ruth Myrams how are you good, yeah, good well thank, thank you, you. And it looks like you've got something on your face there. I do. Okay. I have Google Glass on my head in Australia. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get back to that, <laughs> that part. Um, <laughs> Bruce? It is exciting. Um, yeah. So, Bruce, you've been uh, watching a thread of information unfold in front of you uh, in the Deadly Glass group with G+. And today I, I saw an email from you to me and to, to the others around some of the concepts as to the governance and some of the considerations in a cultural context that we're going to have to make for what is really a very age-old technology. So what have you got under the, on that table there? Bruce, can you show the world what it is that you've kept in your garage for the last 20 years? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're showing my age now. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make a point that I am one of the rare few people in the world who happen to have a, a VFX 1.4, which was a piece of um, technology 20 years ago that enabled you to f uh, flesh out the principles which we're talking about today. And mm. it was one of those rare things in the 80s that went to production. Uh, it shouldn't have, but it did, and we're thankful for it because it was the emerging thing. So I dug it out of the shed, and it's got dust on it, and it's still in its original box. And uh, it runs on AT architecture, which is probably older than the paramotic stuff. And that's being that's that's being respectful. Um, uh, I grew up in uh, platforms of ATXT uh, uh, three eight two eight six three eight six four eight six, and uh, big numbers meant big money. So uh, this this is a great piece of. I just wanted to bring my glass. Yeah, uh, and and uh, you know it's a little bit crazy, but how how the world turns uh, full circle. It does. Yeah. It does. It, it does, Bruce. Now, Bruce, I'd imagine that that the uh, the architecture that you've just shown us obviously was not connected by the internet. The internet wasn't actually invented then. It was invented, but it hadn't become a a publicly accessible resource by then. Is that right? Uh, funnily enough, we did have access to it through uh, twenty six hundred board modems and. Um, clandestine sort of hookups. At that stage, it was happening. Um, it wasn't illegal or immoral. It was uh, just people communicating and connecting. And uh, so, I think that was the emerging technology. So, the headset itself wasn't connectable. Um, mm -hmm. It ran on standalone architecture, but um, definitely, you had you know everyone was sort of communicating on a very low board rate at that stage. Mm. So, Bruce, what's your take on what's currently unfolding or seems to be unfolding across the world where a large corporation has taken uh, aspects of AR and aspects of wearable computing and co-joined them into a device that is networked, that is responsive, is voice-driven, bone conduction, the whole lot? What's, what's your take? I mean, you know, it's a great piece of um, junket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it, it's it's a fantastic uh, bit of technology, but we have to put some parameters around it. It's no different than in the uh, you know early days when Aboriginal people were measured in a particular way or um, seen as different. It's just another tool. Um, my take on it is that it's great technology and it's going to happen. Um, let's put some some flexible and some feasible parameters around its use. Look, my greatest, my greatest concern is it, it, it shouldn't be a collection material and put Aboriginal people in 
into antiquity. It shouldn't be a thing that just collects data about us. I see it as a tool that can uh, geospatial, you know, the email about mapping our landscape and talking about invasive species on country, talking about water flows, talking about our cultural management of country so that it becomes valuable to people on, on ground. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then that becomes a proving ground for all of those high-end principles we've discussed for glass and it's soon to be released cousins and, and whatever comes, but it, it absolutely drives a positive outcome today or an economic positive flow or a social flow. It's no good. It's no good. It's no good to us if it doesn't do that. Yeah, it's not useful. So I mean, I uh, mean, it's, it is always useful, at, and it will always happen. Mm. It's about, um, you know, Aboriginal people don't want to just have vast amount of information at our fingertips. We want to utilise the minimal amount of information we have to the best return. And that's the space we want to push our glass into where it doesn't matter how much bandwidth you have or you think you need, how much don't we need and how much can we utilise within that. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the Aboriginal essence. That's the space of, look, our communities don't have the same bandwidth and the world doesn't have the bandwidth that most multinational countries do. So let's work within one hundredth of that bandwidth and see what we can do within it. And that's how Aboriginal people work. You know, it doesn't matter how much you think you need, it's the essence of what country can serve for you and what you can put to country. And, and when we put this technology in that space, it flies because we have so much at our fingertips. But we don't need it all. We only need the little bit that makes the most positive change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It most certainly does. So, Bruce, you've talked about in your in your email today that there's a certain um, application called GXP Explorer, uh, Snap, using that in the context of hands-free geospatial data collection while walking through on traditional country with custodians. Um, there's a lot of people that have been interacting with us that this is for the very first time an understanding that in in the, in the Australian context, in Australian Aboriginal context, that there's a very different idea around country and what it means to take technology into the, these environments. So you've talked about geospatial mapping of cultural landscapes that's tied to language. You've talked about walking on country with voice recording in, in language, traditional dialect. You've talked about dual naming of country, species identification, historical reference versus traditional owner's eyes. Do you see that coming together through perhaps an app or some application that is made available through glass? Is that the idea? Absolutely, and, and not only glass, open source, so that yeah. um, the, the, the data can be shared across whatever platform might be most viable in a community. So mm -hmm. we have that quality of information shared across multi-platforms straight away, whether it be a, a handset, a tablet, a glass, um, something we might not even de have developed yet. Um, even having um, maybe where glass can provide an open resource Wi-Fi in a community at a, at a minimum access board rate so that everyone in that community can access glass. I mean, this is where um, the international focus can be on communities about we don't need a cable in that community now. If you've got glass, let's mm -hmm put that bandwidth in that community and demonstrate, work with that community. And this is um, what we've done with Paramotic as well, is work, work on the outcome basis and let the product then serve the outcome. Because glass uh, is a piece of plasticine. You know, like, what do we want to mould? What do we want to mould? What, what do we want glass to be? Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's why we're here today. And and, and um, I don't know what what uh, the ladies think in Canberra, but we've we've talked about we've got to tell the story for the journey, and then the the pieces of the puzzle sort of will come together. And that is not the traditional way of business, and it's not the corporate way, but it's definitely the Arnhem way, the Koori Murray Nunga way, where 
you go to the community a little bit, you drag them along for the journey and some of the pieces come together and that's what we're trying to teach Glance. Mm -hmm. Teach it, yeah. yeah, very much. So, Michaela, um, I provided you with uh, I, I, a device that was lent to me today. Can you just give yeah. me an I give give the world an idea as to what happened in your feelings and and um, also in when you were handling the device and so on. What's 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 happening for you? Yeah, so when I first um, picked up the device from you today, Alex, I actually got sweaty palms and I felt shaky and I, I felt like I had a piece of equipment in my hand that's actually going to change humanity. And I got very emotional about it and, you know, all the things that we've discussed were just running through my head at a million miles an hour. Like, what what have I got in my hand and what is this thing going to do for Indigenous Australians? What is it going to do for humanity? Um, I, That's all know, right. I, quite emotional. I, I, I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was emotional. And then, then I came home and I like you gave me no instructions. And I, you know, this is part of the experiment. I wanted to see how intuitive background. How how intuitive is it? So I came home. I like. Um, how do I plug this in, Alex? Where does it go? What what buttons do I need to press? And you know, once I worked out that the thing was actually flat when I received it, <laughs> um, and I got to charge it, and I fiddled around with the buttons, um, I worked it out. And you know, I now I've worked out in five minutes, how sitting at how to connect it to the, to the internet, how to make it shoot a video. video. Photo. I've accidentally sent the photo to somebody who. Obviously, logs on to this <laughs> glass. Um, <laughs> so they're going to receive a couple of photos because I'm going, wow, I can't make it do anything else. I don't know what I'm doing. So, it's going yeah. to the cops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at the wall. Looking did, you're looking yeah. at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, jealous. Yeah, I'm jealous. Is... I'm jealous. Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. So, uh, so we can see your. Behind you, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. So, Michaela, there's literally, if not hundreds, there will be tens of thousands of people that are going to watch this in the near future. And I can guarantee that. Yeah. Because um, when I first met you, I said to you, are you aware of what putting this on might, might, might mean? And I don't know of anyone, mm. an Australian Aboriginal woman, who has put the device on and said things to me in a way that really resonated very clearly to me. And here we are on this amazing journey forward, going forward. It's just, an, as Bruce has said, it's just another technology that's, you know, yeah. well, he's got one there that's 20 years old and it's still rolling, you know, it's still rolling. So, <laughs> but but what, what was it about, why did you feel emotional, do you think, about it? What was the, what was the emotive part? Um... The emotive part had a lot to do with the post that I put forward today um, on our website, which mm. was linked back into the Deadly Glass community. It was about you know when things started being put on our heads, what that meant for our community, and the divisiveness that it it brought to our community. And you know when I'm I'm talking about things that were measuring our heads, phonology, yeah, phonology for for intelligence to to make us more intelligent and that I got really really emotional. They were my relatives, they were my people that that happened to. And yeah, you said I said to me too yeah. about the sorry, I'm just going to we just we talked about this, so yeah. I'm going we um we did yeah, record yeah. it. Yeah. But I, I'm going to talk about um my observation and interaction with Mick when she put it on. Um so we're on the phone and she said I'm and I'm paraphrasing here, but it's like particularly for Aboriginal people, we're at this crossroads because for the first time this has been in a sort of self-determinative way by Mick. So she hasn't had someone else come and put it on her head or tell her to do it or mm -hmm. make the choice for her. She's decided to do it with the full knowledge of what it could mean um, in a negative sense but with um, eyes open to, to the possibilities that it could have when it's used as a tool by community for community. So yeah, and yeah, design with community. Yeah, it's you know it's emotional. I can see, I 
you know, I worked in national parks for 10 years. I can see the relevance of having this thing on your head while you're having a tourism experience, like a digital tourism experience, what that means. I can see what it from a biological perspective when you can go out there and scan lands and, you know, do um, pest and weed incursion mapping and do climate change mapping and, you know, all the things that Bruce spoke about. Like, it's an amazing tool for natural resource management. It's, a, it's, it's an amazing tool and, you know, I think I'm conscious of, you know, the dark side of it as well. And, you know, it's it's emotional. It's a it's a it's catch twenty two. It's coming and I'd rather be in the space where we can work together with developers to and you know, and Bruce and everybody and say, Okay, well, what do we want this thing to do? And if we can dream it, we can do it. And there needs to be some respect around, you know, cultural boundaries with this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alex, if I can take the liberty Absolutely. Yep. There needs to be a discussion around um, a very um, particular point of Australia's history where Aboriginal people were numbered. Mm -hmm. It is very closely adhered to international policies policies of that era, which today are considered abhorrent. But um, putting something on your head and uh, identifying yourself with a number today as Google Glass is very, very close to what happened in Australia's history. I myself proudly have my mother's registration for Aboriginality or the lack thereof under the Australian Aborigines Protection Act. And this is what we were talking about earlier about how the technology must influence and be the community must be ahead of the game and be part of the solution. And it's a very old rhetoric, but it carries very strong positive ties that if we're not part of that solution very early, we only become a partner. Yeah, at best. Yeah, at best. And, and, yeah. and then that, that, that numbering of us was a terrible, terrible, terrible part of Australia's legislative history but it is why we carry great concern around products like this. And it's not like we're not embracing it. Um, God, I've got a 20-year-old one in my back pocket. Um, it is that the application of the gathering of data has applied to us previously in the most abhorrent and negative terms. How mm -hmm. do we work with glass? so that it can help our communities grow, keep our language, keep our communities and our culture vibrant and therefore partner with the rest of the community for a better social outcome. You know, I mean, it sounds like a pie in the sky stuff, but really we, we are shaping the discussion here, so let's put it out there. If this product's going to hit our communities, how can it do it in that way rather than the lessons we've already learned as so negative? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, like this this tool, Bruce. You, you know, we've been doing evidence based policy in the government for a long time. You and I, and this tool is going to help inform policy. And we all know that what impact policy has on communities. So I think we need to put you know put a foot do it properly. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I want to put it out to the glass community that. Great policy drives positive outcomes on the ground and our biggest failure in our policy environment in the last 10 years of multiple governments of different persuasions is that it hasn't been proof driven mm -hmm. and, and, and glass being the accountability on country can prove whether that happens and can demonstrate whether good policy really is good policy yeah. because mm -hmm. there's no testing ground for, for great policy um, and really we've had some atrocious policy wheeled out over the last 10 years and we've had to manage the worst situations and get the best outcomes. So here's a technology that we're introducing into our communities. Let's get it in a space that says, okay, what are the social implications and how can this change today? Mm. How can within three to 12 months can we change? Because we also are going to provide a great platform to test the glass principles of the future. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like we're going to be the proving ground. Like um, I think uh, one of the earlier emails said about low bandwidth, remote, low water, desert communities. If we can pull it off in our communities using the ethos of using as least bandwidth as possible, double splicing, triple splicing, um, utilising copper, utilising all those third world technologies in our space, and then blow it out to glass. My God, what can we do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. So, um, Bruce, in in that context, um, I understand that you're organising with Michaela and with the whole team to um, visit what's known as the fitting. Essentially, it's where an individual that that wishes to purchase glass must have a US shipping address, they must have a this, they must have a that. Then they attend and they go through some form of something that we don't really know yet. And it's up to you guys to, to or Michaela's nominated herself to do so in that respect with the support of um, a good contact of ours, Cecilia Abadai, who has been a wonderful person across the Google Class Explorer community who I differ from markedly in, our, in my opinions, but I, who I have a great deal of respect for. So the delegation itself, travelling in an international context, um, Bruce, what do you expect to, to experience when you hit Los Angeles and accompany Michaela and perhaps meet with some indigenous community in uh, that area? Oh, well, gee, that... It, this is like um, speed dating IT style, is what I said to Michaela. <laughs> you know, uh, what, I want, what I want to bring... What I want to bring to that mob is... <laughs> they're all killing themselves now. My, sto on, my story... I, I, we, we've got a story here, I reckon, where glass can connect straight away. Mm -hmm. And I still need to sit down with um, the Paramotor crew and say, look, this is what I reckon is the story that will connect internationally straight away. Mm -hmm. And if we're not ready to go to our international colleagues and brothers and sisters and say, okay, how can we connect straight away? So straight away we have to connect on an Aboriginal space, an Indigenous mm -hmm. space, and then let the glass come into play, and that is that is our point of difference, mm -hmm. and that is the internationality of the conversation. Glass will then become so much more substantial and sustainable and viable because it is part of the conversation, not driving the conversation, and not influencing it. So, so it's it's the coming together of Aboriginal people, and and in a very short time, you usually understand that you've experienced very, very similar issues around the world and then let glass come into play. Mm -hmm. And having had it on my head 20 years ago, um, I hope I can play um, better than Wolfenstein and Galactica on it. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, in the old days that was VFX 4-1 territory. <laughs> it was indeed. And Galata is the price of that. Yeah, but the, the, the geospatial stuff I'm talking about on country, if we want to drag it straight to the ground, is let's have the invasive species identified by glass. We talked yeah. about having our ears on, and I spoke to you previously in a video chat about big eyes where when you put Aboriginal people on country, they can see things differently. So mm -hmm. let's let glass learn that technology so that when Aboriginal people walk on country, not only do they identify their space, their language group, their skin group, their, their tie to country and their reason for being, but they can collectively grab native species, invasive species, endangered species, uh, weeds of, not, uh, of national significance, and therefore we can utilise that technology and that information for a plus for the community so that they can value add to the broader community. So not only does glass become a collective information, it becomes breaking down the, the barriers of reconciliation, you know, working shoulder to shoulder. There's nothing better than working in the field shoulder to shoulder to break down <laughs> reconciliation. And glass can be a vehicle for that, you know. Mm -hmm. All we've got to do is get ahead of the game a bit to, to say, look, 
Aboriginal people have been in this space. Aboriginal people will eat up glass because it's not racist. It doesn't mm -hmm. second. It doesn't second guess. It doesn't preempt. All it wants is an interactivity, and Aboriginal people love that. Mm -hmm. Very evident through the use of social media and other forms that are bringing the world together. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very curious to know um, any reservations, Bruce, that um, you have about upon return of developers who don't have a sense of this um, strength around understanding community for community and and land and commu and 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 uh, the traditional values that are in that way. What might happen if developers per se just jump in there and start? creating crazy stuff that um, doesn't adhere to that. Well, you know, there's a lot of lessons in the last 200 years that have demonstrated negative outcomes. In the most recent times, you know, in our own Google Maps has inadvertently had perverse and negative outcomes and we should learn lessons by that. The, the mass collection of data for collection's sake without any rules is uh, you know, inherently have got to have problems. So then go into communities where our, that data is often the keys to country. And mm -hmm. you can have, if all of the information without rules or guidelines is just dragged into the marketplace, you'll have desecration of sites, you'll have mass desecration of cultural assets, language groups, including, you know, physical sites. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be managed as as would be anywhere in any part of the world, mm -hmm. and and I think um, there's a social obligation and a social license for operation that requires that we have to um, just be in that space where we're bare minimum asking the question: A, should we be there? B, is this information shareable? And C, who owns the ability to manage the information? And if it goes mm -hmm. up into a cloud, which it will, there's got to be that continual point of reference we've spoken about where at least you can come back to say, you know, there's got to be a moral judgment around this and it shouldn't be displayed for cultural, religious or any other reasons. And, mm -hmm. and you know, as data collectors, they've got to get in that space. May I yeah. add something as a non-Indigenous part of the team, Alexander? Um, sure. In my experience, if people try and do this um, without engaging the community and without the support of the community, they will get access to very different um, information and it will be far less rich and won't actually achieve the purpose for which they're collecting information. So um, it's been my experience with Indigenous people around the world, like all of us, we keep what is precious to us safe. Um, until we trust people and unless you go in as a trusted person or with trusted people you won't get access to the most precious information so um, I'm not uh, advocating exploiting it in any manner at all but I'm saying if you want to do this and you are a developer and you want to do it um, to the richest it can be then you need to engage with community or you will miss um, most of the detail that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I, look, I, support that. That, I, I support that wholeheartedly. Uh, we got a word in our language called jubity, and if we think you're jubity, which is basically stupid, we'll give you stupid information. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, can, I can honestly point to multiple places in history where Aboriginal people have told blatant lies to spin you fellas a yarn because it's been good fun. And... Mm -hmm. And it's about ignorance, and if you bring ignorance, we're the first ones to give it to you. So um, mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. We've already got a Wikipedia out there. We don't need another one with a flash headset. Mm -hmm. That's right. The other thing, Bruce, on, on the flip side of that, um, and I include you in this sort of statement, is that um, even if you are ignorant because you haven't had experience before but you're open and wanting to learn and coming with your heart open and the right spirit. Um, Indigenous people are very welcoming. Um, they're the most welcoming group of people I've ever had the privilege of encountering. So I think, um, you know, we wouldn't well, many, discourage... Many, absolutely. But, you know, there are many Aboriginal people with Aboriginal status in our communities that are not Aboriginal. They've earned their stripes and, 
and Aboriginal people are the most sharing of information. But we are also the sharpest over 200 years of, you know, I don't know if I can say it in this, but we've got the best bullshit radars out there, you know, <laughs> so, and, 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 and legislation's taught us that. So we want to test this environment, and this is why I'm hanging with you guys and this crew. Let's test the environment to the end. If you want to push us to the precipice, we will take you to that cultural place where we all sit and say, okay, what do we need to do to make this right? And at least we're at a point where we're open and we're talking about it because most times we're not. That's and right. most, most times we don't get the opportunity to shape the conversation. So mm -hmm. that's my interest in being in this conversation. I'm not for a minute thinking I'm going to bring a, a you know, a, put a bow on it or... Or we are we are really opening the door of our um, positive engagement with community. Yeah. <clears throat> this is just another tool. You know, let's let's look into the future. Glass is going to be finished in a minute, and something else is going to come. But we would have established the protocols for engagement. That's right. Yeah, cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> the words the words cheeky. Um, and and that's what we need to be. So um, it's it's for the for the brevity of this recording for other people listening to this. This is an invitation I would imagine from you all to be able to engage in this story, in this journey, and to walk through on country with your ears on, so to speak. And um, and what a fantastic title for a way to actually engage with this with with the whole mechanism of this. Um, I'm actually going to tag this Glass Explorers because we have one amongst us that is exploring, not in the way that it has. I have seen the Explorers Explore. Um, and it's a real privilege to be able to talk about this, to be able to reflect even before anything has begun in a way, mm. as we gradu gradually understand this and, and become knowledgeable about that. And no, we all know that the current glass that Michaela is wearing there is the brick phone for the head. Mm -hmm. so whatever, yeah. whatever is coming is going to be radically um, smaller in form, is going to be more acute, is, yes, quite likely going to be mapped to brain-based brain, um, brain behaviours. And um, so we are seeing a very, very small version of something that's quite... is is as I'm tracking, quite a large um, international phenomena. Mm -hmm. So um, I wish ourselves luck on this journey. <laughs> Good luck. Um, <laughs> but I, I want to, yeah. as outcome-based, not pull my old glass out 20 years later. I, re I reckon if everyone who listens to this thinks it's of value, let's take the absolute now technology and use that ethos of using one one hundredth of its ability to perform outstanding things. We can take what's on Michaela's head today and map it in community and make a change today. That's the story I want to tell because it is changing so fast, if we can't plug it on the ground to our communities right now, how are we going to bring them along for the journey later? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's try and slow the roll a bit on those developers and let them go where they need to go in the corporate world, but let's hive a bit of that energy off and say, here's an issue today where we can all be clever and partner with the community with the technology we have right today. You know, we know the Hubble telescope runs on the same computer powering as of an Atari. Mm. <laughs> because when they put it up in the sky, that was the technology available. And, of course, we all know they stuffed up and we changed the algorithm. We finally got the photos to be a better technology. But that's the... How can we do that? You know, if people are going to listen to this today, my value is I want to go bush with you guys tomorrow, Alex. I want to take you and uh, um, we have a saying in our mob, you can be a shiny bum or a dusty bum. 
I'll, I'll be the dusty bum, and I've been the dusty bum. And, and I know I think you that's... have. <laughs> I know you have. But, but let's be dusty bums with glass on with yeah. mob. <laughs> that's that's um, and I'm, I welcome that invitation, Bruce. Um, and I put it I out there to everyone who listens too. <laughs> that's it. Come and be dusty bums with glass on. So that's very important, though. I see that. Um, as I said to Michaela, when Cecilia comes to country and she disappears off with the mob and the women out into uh, the heat, the heat and the land and the sky make a certain difference to somebody's soul. I've learned that Alex, one. That's I wanna, why I've this way of doing it. I've got to throw in there my own cultural connection. We're going to take them to uh, a sea country mm. and we're going to go in desert country and we're going to do the men's and the women's. Mm. And you will see the, the total landscape of Australia where you must include the sea country because they're different mob and you must include the desert country and there's different affiliations through men and women. And fortunately enough through both my grandmother and grandfather, I'm one of the few that are desert and sea country. Mm. So I want to acknowledge that glass will be different in that space. Mm. And That's part different. of being that connect to country, glass will be intuitive and know that. Mm. Yes, well, I'm really privileged for you joining this discussion and, and getting this message out, um, which will go out via the Paramotic site. Um, it's fantastic, Bruce, to hear of your 20-year journey <laughs> from, from the AT architecture and where we are now heading. And um, uh, I look forward to more Hangouts where we can bring other people into this discussion and and start to grow this discussion, start to bring these hangouts to the reality of the, of the world. So thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Bye. <laughs>